Hello and welcome everybody, it's your boy King Dems here and we are doing the RMRB predictions for Europe. I said I'd do them, I'm doing them, I'm a reliable guy. Now looking at this RMR, um, obviously I think it's got slightly less strong teams at the very very top. Um, I think not by a lot in all fairness but the other group having navi phase heroic i think those are some of the strongest teams in the world right about now um and here i think players number three is probably maybe just a smidge inflated i think ends are really really rigid g2 were very wobbly at esl pro league not sure what form they're in and nip are number seven obviously but they got Brolan, so we don't know how that's going to play out on paper. Seems like an upgrade, but five riflers haven't really got a dedicated AWP. Maybe Essa Tag, I guess, is going to have to do a lot of AWPing, so it remains to be seen. But I think overall, this qualifier might end up being maybe a little bit more competitive, just because I think the general quality of teams is a bit closer. I think anyone from Entropic to players... Probably even Copenhagen Flames to players. I think any of those teams can beat each other on a given day. And then I think Heat down to probably Endpoint. I think anywhere any of those teams can can beat each other. So we're going to go from top to bottom as we did last time. And I've got to be honest. I actually think... I think from Entropic up, they should all qualify, right? I think players G2, Ents, Nip, Astralis, Entropic probably shouldn't have too many problems qualifying. Just because I do think there is kind of... I think Heat are like a weird middle team. I don't see them as good as kind of Copenhagen Flames upwards, but I see them as a good chunk better than sort of Sprout Down. And the actual rankings that you can see, 21 to 36, would kind of back that up. Um, so I kind of see Entropic to players probably locking in their spots, those six. And then outside of that, except for Copenhagen Flames and Heat, it by my eyes being preferred and being the favorites outside of the top six i think it's really really competitive and actually those last two spots anyone from m point up to flames could take them so i'm going to try and do my best to kind of talk you through some of the the teams that we're looking at i think the biggest dark horses and the biggest threat to take one of these two remaining spots is going to be bad news eagles they have slowly been building a really big name for themselves, I think, in Tier 2, and they've been impressing just generally for about the last year or so. Obviously not under the names Bad News Eagles. What name were they under before? I can't even remember off the top of my head now. That was it. I went and checked. It was Blink, obviously under the Blink tag. And then there was some fuckery, basically, where I think the Blink org wanted to change the roster and the team didn't, and there was a little bit of, of back and forth about what was happening there, but you know, whatever, you'd have to go and ask the players exactly what went on behind the scenes there, but I like this Bad News Eagles team in the fact that they've been together for quite a long time, I, obviously the story of them being like a Kosovan team with, you know, an Albanian coach, and they've got some guy with the Swiss nationality in there, Regan, we've actually got a piece, uh, HLTV coming out at some point um, on Bad News Eagles, so keep an eye out for that one if you want to learn more about that team, but I think Bad News Eagles are like the most legitimate upset side out of kind of everyone who isn't obvious. Flames obviously are going to be, I think, pretty well touted to grab a spot. I think the big thing about Flames is that they generally tend to step up in the more important events. As we saw last year around IEM Fall and the Major itself, Flames were a very, very competitive team, even amongst the top teams. They ran Nip, obviously, very, very close in a series to qualify for the next stage of the Major when, when they were at that point. So I think Flames, honestly, on their peak day, are like a top 10 team. I think the problem with Flames is the consistency. Obviously, they struggle for consistency. They're not really part of that tier one invite circuit. They struggle to find the consistency in those tier two and kind of online events, which I think is understandable when you've proven that you could be a top team. And when you just kind of fell short of getting that signing to like a bigger organization, obviously, they were touted at the end of last year to be joining Complexity. Complexity ended up going with the NA roster, which by my money was a mistake. I think signing this Flames team, they would have had a much better and much more competitive team at the top level. It's got to affect your motivation, particularly when you're going into these lower tier online events. So I'm not really worried. And I actually do think Flames will take a spot. So if I was going purely on 
on feeling, I would actually say the top seven are all going to take a spot. And then Bad News Eagles are going to be the guys who kind of come through and create that bit of an upset for the final spot. I think he... I think what we've seen from Heat is they are, like I say, they're kind of a t absolutely tippity top of the tier two. They're, they've been together for a while. I think they play good CS. I think they're a well-structured, well-drilled team. I think the problem is that they have clear limitations in terms of just raw skill and fragging. And I think actually some of these teams below them probably... I think especially Spirit. I think Spirit are going to be really dangerous just in terms of raw fragging potential. Like... You know, we know how good Dexter can be. We know how good um, Magix can be or Magix or Magix. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to say his name. Can be. And Siren and Patsy, particularly Patsy, has been like tearing it up in the lower echelons for that Spirit Academy team. So there's a lot of like dangerous firepower down here. Forzy and, and Neofrag can be really big fraggers for Sinners. Sprout, I don't see as like a mad fragging team. I think they're a bit more structured, but... There are definitely some teams down here that could kind of cause some problems with just their raw skill. And I think that is where Heat are probably going to struggle. I'm not sure they're going to be able to get the wins consistently enough in a Swiss format. I, I, I think they'll probably drop an upset game and they'll probably lose if they play against the better teams. So I think that'll probably be enough to see them not go through the qualifier. So, yeah, um, my prediction basically is going to be these seven plus bad news eagles. Um, outside of that, just talking a bit more about some of the other teams. Like I say, I think Spirit are going to be very dangerous just with the raw skill on offer. The problem is, is I haven't seen enough of Spirit with this new lineup. But I think Dexter's legit. I think he's the truth. I think he's a fantastic orper. I'm, I've never been massively convinced of, with Chopper as an in-game leader. I think he's a good fragger and I think he's a pretty skilled player. But as an in-game leader, I'm not so sure. I'm not convinced. I think leadership was one of actually the problems on the previous Spirit lineup. So, yeah, reserving judgment on Chopper. But I actually think this, this lineup is pretty decent. It's got some promise. I think with a better in-game leader, I'd be more excited about Spirit. Even if Chopper was just like another player on the lineup, I'd be fine with it. But... Yeah, I think Spirit will probably fall short, but be a pretty dangerous upset team. I think Sinners will be the same. They've been together for a very long time, and I think that bodes well in general. I think that means you can have a lot of structure to fall back on, whereas some of the lower tier teams maybe are going to struggle for that structure to fall back on when, when the going gets tough. For example, I think you could very much say that about Spirit. I think that's probably where they'll struggle and where they'll lack. And they've got Neofrag and Forzy, who I think both of those guys are very, very good. Neofrag has obviously proven it um, last year around the time of, of IEM Fall and stuff. They did just about fall short, but they, they look pretty good. And Forzy has kind of been tearing it up for Enterprise. I saw him at V4 Future Sport, and he looked a very, very decent prospect. Unsurprised that when Oscar went, he was picked up by the Sinners lineup. So I think Spirit and Sinners are probably the two most legit upset teams, obviously outside of Bad News Eagles, but I've kind of put Bad News Eagles as going through. I've put them as my kind of like off meta pick, as it were, to go through. So excluding those, I think these are the two most dangerous upset teams. I think Endpoint are very interesting. Borosh obviously is kind of just fragging out for this lineup, um, but I think they... I think that core of Crucial, Mighty Max, and Surreal does just kind of lack when it comes to Tier 1. They're, they're not really good enough. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if Nurse and Boros can kind of elevate them and maybe sneak them through his qualifier. I doubt it. Sangal, I've got to be on honest, I don't know very much about. Um, they have a, an absolutely bizarro lineup with, like, obviously the Hungarian Corey. They've got a couple of Germans. they got a Lap... Is that a Latvian flag? Austrian, my bad. they got an Austrian and a Turk in there. So that's a weird lineup. I don't really know much about them. Anonimo, obviously, got a few names that have been knocking around the Polish scene a while. I highly doubt they're going to be good enough again. There are a lot of names here that have basically proven that they're not quite good enough for Tier 1. So, yeah, I don't think Anonimo will do much. And this ASG lineup, the only person I really know about are, like, Waterfalls and Poria. But these guys have been knocking around... Um, on like the one pgs and stuff of this world and again they've been around long enough and proven that they're probably not really good enough for tier one so i don't really expect much out of anonimo and asg sangal i don't know much about but i don't expect much out of i think the big unknown quantity for me in terms of a team that might actually have some potential to do something in this qualifier is sprout 
they've got some decent skill on the lineup and when we saw them um shit what did we see them was in was it in the blast i can't even remember or was it iem it was iem cavice qualifier wasn't it yeah 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 we saw them in the IM Katowice qualifier and they looked pretty competitive actually in that qualifier. I, again, I think just the problem with this Sprout lineup is probably going to be just fragging in general. They don't really, from what we saw at Katowice, have like a super standout guy. We saw Marix have some, some good games, but we didn't really see like a super standout fragger. And I think, I think the problem with these tier two teams in a Swiss kind of format is are they going to be able to match up man for man with the best teams? And considering that, well, I said this about the previous predictions video that you had to play like at least one good team to make it through the qualifier. I mean, it looks like um, in the other qualifier in RMRA that saw, I mean, I think their game is going on right now. I, I haven't I haven't looked at it for a little bit. But it looks like Saw are going to maybe, or Forza even, I think one of those two teams are going to be able to make it to the major without actually having had to have beaten a decent team. So Swiss system is not perfect. But I think that is the problem in general with these kind of Swiss qualifiers for upset teams is best of one is obviously great. Best of one it does definitely help and it kind of mitigates the power of a swiss system if it was swiss best of three i think you'd see almost no upset team make it I, it just wouldn't happen i think there's too big of a sample size of games for you to be able to kind of keep upsetting teams and keep surprising teams but i think in general just the way swiss works it it helps kind of smooth out those upsets and it it obviously allows for best of one upsets but you're going to have to get through to a series to qualify. If you wanted to make it in straight games and only have to play one series, then you probably have to like win all your games. You'd have to go through 3-0. And that would mean upsetting two teams in best of ones and then a best of three. It's probably not going to happen. I mean, I guess the way Saw did it is probably the best way as in losing one of your games so that you... It's almost like making a lower bracket run. I think by losing your first game, you almost give yourself a slightly easier run through the Swiss system because you're going to play somebody... The next two games you play are going to be against teams that lost their first game. So they might not be the best of the best. And if you get lucky with draws and seeding, then it seems like you can squeak your way through. But as I say, I think it's it's difficult with the Swiss format. So, yeah, I know it's going to be even more boring this one because in the last one I picked kind of two upset teams to go through. I actually predicted Big, who obviously I've already made it through the RMRA. And then I predicted... Who's the other upset team I predicted? God damn, I can't even remember now. Ah, well, go and watch that video if you want to know. So, yeah, unfortunately for this one, I'm going to be boring and say the top seven is going to be Flames upwards. I think all these teams will qualify. And then Bad News Eagles are going to be my rogue pick for an upset team that are going to make it through this qualifier. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Remember, you got to like it. you got to comment. Hit the bell as well for the notifications. And if you did not like it, I don't care, men's.